What's up, Brad family? One of the most prominent childhood memories I have is watching my brothers play Metal Gear Solid and being completely overjoyed when they'd hand over the controller to me just for the alarm to sound and the exclamation point to pop up a minute later. I haven't really kept up with the series since, but after seeing the impeccable scores that Phantom Pain has been receiving, I started reading about the series and I found some super cool information that I thought would be a lot of fun to share with you. So let's get to it. Number one, if you haven't yet played the entire series or you're wanting to replay it from the beginning, for a fun experience, you can play the games based on the storyline's chronological order rather than the release dates. But if you do decide to go down this route, be prepared for your eyes to feel a little wonky after going back and forward between different consoles. Number two, Metal Gear was originally going to be released on the 3DO interactive multiplayer by Panasonic rather than the MSX2. Number three, the game developers make some pretty spooky appearances in Metal Gear. If you use the camera that can be found in the game and point it in certain directions at certain points, you will be able to spot the developers depicted as ghosts up to an incredible 42 times. You can make it your fun personal side mission to go on this paranormal hunt. Number four, the title of the games can cause a bit of confusion because some of the games are called Metal Gear and others are called Metal Gear Solid. The reason for the change comes with the series third installment. There are a few reasons as to why the word solid was added. One refers to Solid Snake, the main protagonist in the series, and another is because because the third game was the first to be done with a 3D design, thus creating the look of a solid world. Number five, when transitioning from 2D to 3D in Metal Gear Solid, the production team used the help of Legos to create the map designs, proving once again that it's completely justifiable to play with children toys when you're an adult. Number six, Everyone knows that smoking can be hazardous to your health, but in case you forgot, Otacon or Otacon, depending on who you heard pronounce it, will be there to remind you if you bring cigarettes with you on a mission in Metal Gear Solid. But of course, in video game fashion, cigarettes may actually save your life rather than harm it. They can be used to expose sensor-activated explosives that if were set off would result in an end game. Number seven, in Metal Gear Solid, while fighting Psycho Mantis, you can actually see through his point of view by switching to first person mode. That's pretty neat and totally sounds like it would complicate things. Number eight, speaking of Psycho Mantis, did you know that there is two ways to beat him in Metal Gear Solid? One way is to unplug your controller and then replug it in the second controller port. This is the most common way as it's told in the game. But the second way comes after you die following the command to switch controller ports. If you contact Campbell again, he'll ask you if your second port isn't working and offer an alternative method requiring you to smash two statue heads instead. Number nine, the Japanese version of Metal Gear Solid has quite a few unique surprises waiting to be discovered. One such Easter egg is a hidden message that can be found during your fight with Psycho Mantis. But finding this Easter egg is even more challenging because it requires a memory card containing Snatcher and Police Knot save data to unlock it. Number 10, there is a bunch of alternative dialogue throughout Metal Gear Solid that depends on your actions. One such instance is if you take too long to be Ocelot. He'll poke fun at you saying you'll never live up to the name The Boss. Number 11, a Japanese radio drama based on Metal Gear Solid aired in the late 90s for a total of 12 installments. The drama is not considered canon as it is an alternative storyline path depicting events following Shadow Moses. Another nifty fact about this radio show is that the Japanese voice actors in the game reprise their rules for the series. Number 12, there's a hilarious and pretty dirty trophy that can be earned in Metal Gear Solid 2. Said trophy is called Snake Beater and it's unlocked by entering first person mode while on the tanker and then staring at the pictures of the scantily clad ladies within the lockers. You then have to call Otacon, he will scold you for wasting time with such matters and boom, your achievement is earned. Number 13, there are a boatload of silly easter eggs sprinkled throughout the series. In Metal Gear Solid 2, 
a photo of either the poster of the mail chest or the Vulcan Raven action figure will prompt Otacon to make vague comments about Snake's sexuality. I can see a theme within these Easter eggs. Number 14, the Metal Gear Solid 2 that we know today is not the same as the original version. After the terrorist attacks of 9-11, they decided to omit a few scenes feeling it would be in poor taste to include them. One such deleted scene involved the destruction of the Statue of Liberty. Number 15, there is a fan film titled Metal Gear Solid Philanthropy that is set in 2007 surrounding the events a Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Though it was a fan-made film, Kojima has reportedly said he absolutely loves the movie and was overjoyed that someone would be that big of a fan of the series to complete such an extensive project. Number 16. After being asked if he'd be interested in doing another game in an interview, Harry Gregson Williams, the music composer, replied that if it was set on another oil rig, then no. But if it would be set in the Amazon, he would consider Consider it. Some articles have reported that a jungle theme was already planned, but Kojima used the info to butter Williams up by saying his words inspired the game's setting. But in an interview, Williams squashes those rumors by saying he knew it was just a coincidence and that it must have been planned long before he did that interview. Number 17. In Metal Gear Solid 3, the date of the Virtuous Mission is August 24th, 1964, but Kojima originally wanted it to fall on the year before so as to match his actual birthday. Though they decided to make it set in 1964 so as to have the JFK assassination impact the storyline. Number 18. Game designers slipped in an easter egg in Metal Gear Solid 3 that is sure to make Silent Hill fans very happy. In one of the rooms on the second floor of the lab, there are paintings identical to those found in the church area in Silent Hill 3. Number 19. When deciding on an ending for Metal Gear Solid 4, one proposal had Snake and Otacon turning themselves in for the crimes they committed and they were ultimately executed. For obvious reasons, the staff voted against this route. That would have in one depressing ending. Number 20, one way to knock a PMC troop unconscious in Metal Gear Solid 4 is to grab their crotch. But when it comes to the all-female Haven troop, this is not the case because the grab turns into a pervy grope. If you decide to attempt the move anyway, the soldier will yell a few different phrases, one being, you men are all the same, followed by a swift kick. Number 21, in Metal Gear Solid 4, Ocelot will actually kiss Snake if you allow it. Yeah, you heard me right. During the final fight, if you get into a headlock, Ocelot will give you a peck on the cheek. This will also unlock the you're pretty good trophy. Number 22, this easter egg involves your controller. In Metal Gear Solid 4, the conclusion of the Psycho Mantis battle is slightly different depending on whether or not you have a DualShock controller. If you have a 6 axis, Mantis will go mad over the fact that the vibration is gone. With a DualShock 3, Mantis will cheer as he finds out that the controller's vibration is back before disappearing. You can also hear his 6 axis conclusion by turning off the DualShock. Number 23, Metal Gear Solid Solid 4 has another easter egg that involves the controller and something tells me a few of you will find this one much more interesting. If you shake the controller during a call with Rose, her breasts will jiggle depending on how you shake the controller. Number 24, Kojima makes a secret appearance in Ground Zeroes. The side-off Intel Operative Rescue ends by revealing that the VIP target Big Boss and Miller was rescuing none other than the game's creator donning his signature glasses. Number 25, Ground Zeroes pays homage to the series' previous installments with hidden logos scattered around the Deja Vu mission. Every single logo can be spotted if you look hard enough. Number 26, Metal Gear 5 is comprised of two separately announced projects, Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain. Ground Zeroes was first revealed in August of 2012 and Phantom Pain was revealed in December of that same year but was presented as an original title by the fictional developer Moby Dick Studios. It wasn't until the 2013 Game Developers Conference was the truth revealed that the two titles are related. Ground Zeroes serves as a prologue to the Phantom Pain. Number 27. This 
past March, Konami announced would be parting with Kojima Productions. It was revealed that as part of the separation, Kojima's name would be removed from the cover and all associated merchandise. A spokesperson did go on to state that Kojima would be involved with the franchise. Number 28, the Metal Gear series is forever embedded in video game culture for its continued popularity over the span of nearly three decades. As of March 2015, the franchise has sold a whopping 41.2 million copies around the globe. To put that into perspective, there are around 64 million people living in the UK. So imagine about two thirds of them own a copy of the game. That's mind blowing. Number 29, during an interview hosted on Twitch, a fan asked if Kojima was thinking about doing a remake of Metal Gear using Kojima Productions' Fox engine. He responded saying he'd love to as they'd be able to fix plot holes and other inconsistencies within the game, but said they were ultimately too busy making Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Many fans and journalists took this as a potential hint that a remastered version would be coming after Phantom Pain's release. Seeing as Phantom Pain is hitting the shelves on September 1st, which is just a few days away, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. This video has made me feel all nostalgic, and now I want to call up my brothers and watch them play Phantom Pain. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up! Let me know down in the comments which installment of the franchise is your personal favorite. And if you're not yet part of Rattastic community, well what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button to join today! Until next time, bye!